Hello and welcome to the Berkshire Football Stories chat podcast with me, Rob Davis, Tom Canning. Hello. And unfortunately, Abby isn't able to join us, at least not for the whole pod this week, but we have ably stepping into the um, to her shoes, Dan Walkley. Dan, welcome to the pod. Morning. Thanks for having me. No, no problem at all. I genuinely thought you were going to go, unfortunately, Dan Walkley. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a regular a... it's a regular thing that you you do rob whenever you you're announcing that that someone else is in place of someone else you you do say unfortunately they can't be with us this week it's really yeah good. i love it <laughs> <laughs> keeps me on tenterhooks is he going to do it this week no not at all <laughs> we're always happy to have uh new faces on the pod and well dad obviously you've been on a few times now so uh yeah welcome back and i'm um, sure you'll be uh giving us all the insight and uh stepping into abby's shoes very ably as we uh push on i'll do my best <laughs> very good very good well um today we're going to start with the games that happened last night as we're recording we're recording this on uh wednesday so um the games that freshen the menu, memory from Tuesday night's uh, round of fixtures. Uh, we'll start with uh, a pretty impressive away victory for Hungerford, who travelled down to Weymouth, uh, fellow relegation strugglers, and came away with a 5-2 victory. Um, added layer of spice there is that the, the uh, Weymouth manager, Bobby Wilkinson, um, viewers will remember him from uh, uh, Bracknell, but he was also the Hungerford Town manager before these uh before his stint to Bracknell took them up to the national the the manager that took them to the national league south incredible result there for uh, uh hungerford and you know just gives them a little bit of um hope again for um staying in the division what do you reckon tom well i mean they've, they've still got work to do haven't they but uh i, I absolutely loved i was following the the hungerford tweets last night and i absolutely loved the use of the sick emoji is it the puke emojis or the sick emojis on their twitter <laughs> uh when it was two all they they, they were two new up and and weymouth got it got it back to two two and just yeah it kind of that's all they needed to write really um that, i think they, they probably could have they probably could have just not bothered with writing the score and everybody would have known exactly what they meant that was a right old kick in the teeth but you know they've got ryan jones uh bristol i think it's from bristol rovers they've got they've got ryan jones um he scored again and and i guess what was probably going to be a really really tense um everything clenched kind of final 20 minutes um actually was quite comfortable in the end, they uh, they, they 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 scored. Um, I've had a bit of trouble working out who the fourth goal scorer was, but I'm, I'm, Dan informs me, and I'm settling on George Smith. Um, <laughs> so the 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 goal gift that went up definitely looks like Matt Berry Hargreaves, but he's wearing number seventeen, which according to the team sheet is George Smith's number. So I'm I'm going with George Smith. I've settled upon that. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a what a win, especially especially after Hungerford got got trounced 4-0 mm. on Saturday at Slough. That's um, you know, that's a stunning fight back. And and I know Bobby Wilkinson, the Weymouth boss, uh, you know, I know he will be absolutely stinging from that. Um, because that's one that he will have had down as as, you know, and 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 Bobby Bobby's a very, very competitive manager. Um no, I've spoken to him a lot of times when he was at Bracknell and, and you know, he's incredibly competitive and we know the kind of Bracknell teams he put out. So that will that will sting and that will hurt. Absolutely. But yeah. full credit to Danny Robinson, really, because he's he's done the job there. He's got the team going again. Absolutely, and I think uh, you know we we had Robbie from uh, uh, was it Newbury today on yes. uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was mentioning about goal scorer, and they seem to have found another one. Um, you know, I think Ryan Jones has been injured. He's another one of their injured strikers that they've yeah. that they've had a couple of recently, and um, exactly. he's certainly he's, he looks to be back. So yeah, it was a little bit of a. Uh, Weymouth, not the happiest camp at the moment. There seems to be a little bit of unrest there, and uh, there were some um, fans were making their feelings known at full time. Yeah. Uh, I think you were telling us, Dan. Yeah, so I was looking at the um, the local publications down in Dorset this morning. Um, Bobby Wilkinson, you can't can say which one it is. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Dorset Echo were um, reporting this morning that um, there's some booze at full time last night. Obviously, they were looking at that game as a, as a massive six-pointer and, and one they probably could have won off the back of Hungerford's result on Saturday. So, um, yeah, so, so Bobby's come out and said they're entitled to voice their opinion. Obviously, they pay their money to come in and, and, and watch the team. Um, so they're entitled to boo, but I think there was maybe one or two supporters that took it a little bit too far and 
start abusing Bobby's family. So I think obviously that's that no one condones that. So let's just hope that doesn't happen going forward if if they are picking up some uh, another loss coming. Yeah. Um yeah, not the nicest scenes there, but um with the focus on uh we should focus on Hungerford and now that leaves them uh five points from safety. Um there's a few teams there with uh, lots of games in hand. Uh, some teams that have played a couple of games more than Hungerford. So you know, there's 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 definitely hope there, especially now that they're scoring goals. Um, I mean, they've got a tough fixture at the weekend. They're playing Braintree, who are in fourth, and they have Tombridge Angels following that, who are um, in the playoff picture as well. So you know, a couple of tough games, but they're scoring goals, so there's hope for them. Yeah, no. Dan. So, was... Oh, sorry. Go on, I was just pointing it to you. No, I was just saying, especially um, conceding those two goals as well yesterday, they could have easily, um, I guess, it could have gone either way. But coming back to score three in the second half, away from home against a team that's also battling for relegation, it just shows the character mm-hmm. that obviously they have down at Hungerford. So, I mean, Braintree and Tunbridge, both tough, tough games, but hopefully they can take that momentum in and start kicking on again for the end of the season. That'd Absolutely. Be great. Absolutely. Yeah. And so a lot of excitement there. Still plenty of games to go and uh, lots of points to be uh, fought for. So it's, uh, yeah, there's a, there'll be hope with the Crusaders fans, I think. Very good indeed. And uh, another fixture last night and another impressive away victory for a Berkshire side. Bracknell Town travelled to Western Supermare, the side who are top, currently top of the Southern League Premier Division South, and came away with a 3-1 victory. Um, yeah, fan, uh, Bracknell on a stunning run at the moment, Tom. I mean, what a what a result to, to go there. I, think, mm. I, I wrote uh, earlier in the week that... Um, yeah, Bracknell Town juggernaut, and I think those three words are now are now mm-hmm. just um, are just just synonymous with each other. Um, it is it is an express train, it's a freight train, it's whatever it is. It just keeps on rolling, and and there doesn't you know there, there was you know the change of manager going back to, to back to Bobby, um, you know the, the change of manager. You think sometimes that might might affect them, but but Carl Withers and Jamie McClurg have come in, and and that train is rolling, and it's you know it, it's not stopping, is it? It's um, I I I I suppose going into it's not a they've they've got another really tough game on Saturday Truro City they I think they've still got to play Truro City twice mm, so those two games could could really um, you know aside from anything your your excellent research this this week Rob mm. um, Bratton at least if they finish second any playoffs they'll have at home so yeah. that would be that would be an advantage so finishing second is important but um if they beat truro twice they 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 are definitely within a strong shout of finishing second can they win the title i still think you know they are still relying on a western collapse but yeah. they showed last night that that western can be beaten um and 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 that bracknell town train is 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 i can't decide if it stops at all stations <laughs> or if it's just a, a straight through to the end of the season, I'm not sure which one's better. Um, yeah. But it, it's basically all all stops to um, to the to the National League South, isn't it? I, they're going to end up there sooner or later. Mm. Um, and to be honest, I, I I must admit at the start of the season, I probably thought that it was a step would probably be a little step too far this time around. But yeah, um, you know, what do I know? Exactly, no, absolutely I mean. nothing. So, um, and I, and I and I suppose that they, 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 you should never you you know the 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 sort of form that that Withers and McClurg were in when they were at Binfield, it should be absolutely no surprise. And I think it is a little a little bit of a surprise because they were coming in from a lower level. Um, mm. They'd not managed, you know, they, they they were brand new managers. So, so it's it's sometimes it's hard perhaps to to see, but in the end. If you've got the team and you've got the players playing for you, then it doesn't matter. Absolutely. I mean, there, there's still some uh, games to go, uh, like you mentioned. So Truro are, are currently second, Bracknell currently third. Um, Truro on um, 71 points, Bracknell on 66. But Bracknell have three games in hand over Truro. So a strong result at the weekend will really put them in the driving seat for second place. And as you mentioned, uh, Western Supermare, uh, a bit further on, they're on 77 points again They've played two games more than Bracknell. But Bracknell on this run, where they've, um, in their last 21 games in the league, they've won 18 and drawn one of them. It's 
Absolutely. You know, only two defeats at that time. And uh, you know, both of those two good sides as well, sides within the playoff picture. But they've gone from sort of mid-table, lower mid-table when this run started back in October to um, at least, you know, pretty much nailed on playoff uh, place uh, contenders. And then, you know, maybe even looking towards the title. They're in incredible form, Dan. Yeah, they are. And it's great to see, obviously, at the beginning of the season, they had the FA Cup run. They've had the FA Trophy run in between mm. that as well. So they could also, all, they could have um, been a, forgiven, I guess, for the fixture congestion if they if they did drop a couple of points. But like I said, that run is extraordinary, really. And, and the teams they lost to are good teams that are up and around them and also battling for, for promotion. So... If you like you said, if you look at the teams, Western Super Mayor, Truro, Paul as well, all have played at that higher level um, and when established at, at the step they're at now. So what Bracknell are doing is is actually brilliant. Um yeah, it'd be lovely to see them in the playoffs and hopefully get out get up to the National League South. It'll, it'll be great for the club and I think they've done wonders there this season, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this week they became or well, they've taken they're currently the highest goal scorers in the division. But what's interesting is they haven't got um, sort of a, a 20 goal striker, although so there are some strikers or forwards in their in their um, fleet of players that have got some pretty impressive goals per game. I mean, the, the goals are spread between players like Joe Grant and um, Abby Sogan and Daryl Saunders and Mikel Platt and Ben Harris is there now as well. Uh, Joe, Joe Grant currently has 12 goals in 13 league games. So, I mean, he's flying, but uh, yeah, they're spreading their goals around. So it's not just one focal point. It's, it's really is a team performance from, from them. They're looking uh, pretty strong. And you mentioned all those cup runs, Dan, they're still in the um, Barks and Bucks, you know, they've got um, the home semi-final against MK Dons to come. Yeah, and that's another massive game. Obviously, they they beat Wickham in the previous round. Yeah. Um, another giant killing for them this season. So why not? Why can't they go win the Barks and Bucks as well? Um, MK Dons are struggling as well in their in their league. So yeah. Um, yeah, Bracknell are flying on form. MK Dons are going the other way. So yeah, I mean, I think that game's all to play for. It'll be a fascinating time. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, why can't they get through it? Why not? Exactly. Um, so like we say, that game against Truro City, uh, third against second on Saturday um, down at Bottom Meadow. So a pretty, uh, pretty tasty one to uh, look forward to there. Um, a quick mention then of one other uh, side who's on a, a nice run, not quite as uh, um, impressive as Bracknell's, but a, a Woodley United last night are picking up a 2-1 victory over uh, Barks County. Barks County in the playoff picture. And uh, um, so maybe a slight surprise down there at um, Hill Farm Lane. Um, Woodley are on a, a decent little run as well. They've, uh, in their last five games, they've won four, drawn one, and they've beaten, you know, playoff contenders such as Barks County and uh, Raiders Lane there. They're going very well there. And that result, obviously, um, really plays into the um, interesting playoff picture and title race in, in the combined counties Div 1. Go on, Tom. Um, it does, doesn't it? There, there are so many games to play in that Division 1. It's um, yeah. it's mad. And and I think that's that's the trouble, uh, I guess. It's mostly the weather, but of course, ground shares as well will be plentiful in that division. Yeah. Um, so that's not easy. Um, our mate Steve Gabb will, will, is, um, does a lot of fixtures for the Hellenic League and regularly tells us, you know, how how difficult it is and the, and the challenges they come up against. So I don't envy any of the fixture secretaries having to having to deal with this. Um, but there are a lot of games. I, I can't even work out how many months of the season left there is. It is it to, when do we know when the playoffs are? They've been yeah. named, haven't they? April twenty second is the end right. of the combined counties for this year. Um, yeah, so it's, but it's been... there was. Well, there was Sorry, talk no. in uh, midweek that the following Tuesday it may extend to that just to get the, the one more game in. Mm. But if you look at Sandhurst, what have they got still? Four, five 15, games? 15, for a lot of people? 15 now, I think. 15 left now, yeah, I think. I mean, and we've got yeah. just over a month to go. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> something's got to be sorted out pretty quickly. But I, again, I know the playoffs link into step four. So it, it's, it's tough. Especially while Sandhurst are up and around that as well in the playoff positions. Yeah, 
you know, they they could well, they, you know, all, all if all goes in, if they win all those games, they win the title. But having to play, there, there is a point where games in hand becomes a, a, a noose around your neck. That's maybe not a great analogy, um, <laughs> but a, 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 a rock and a hard place. Let's go with that one. Yeah, um, it's just because you've suddenly got to play all those games. They've got they've got a month to play fifteen games, or a month or so to play fifteen games, and then potentially two games in the playoffs as well. So you know they've perhaps still got seventeen games, and that's going to test them. If they go on to win the title from here, then there, then there, there can be no there can be no arguments. I think. Um, you know the, the the team with the with the points on the board is Deportivo Galicia. They've they've yeah. um, they they've they're, they're an interesting side, aren't they? Because they've been around the bottom reaches and they've steadily over the last couple of seasons moved themselves up the table. Um, mm. And Langley have gone from from the bottom to the top. So so there's teams with plenty to talk about. But that that prom- I I reckon combined counties division one at least if you're interested in Berkshire based football um, is, is probably the most exciting division that you know. There, there's there's so many things that could that could curtail or or boost teams as the, as they go on and I, and I note that Sandhurst Town have, have brought in Chris Grace as well so so that won't hurt their their chances of certainly keeping the ball out of the net. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Sandhurst Town winning five nil last night um, against Penn and Tyler's Green. They've been on a bit of a, a wobbly patch of form um, recently, but you know that result perhaps points to um, Points to them getting back on track for and uh, you know becoming the force that they were in the first half of the season once again. So yeah, Sandhurst perhaps Sandhurst and Langley both with good shouts of uh, automatic mm. promotion and uh, you know like we say th- at least three Berkshire sides involved in the playoff picture there. So lots of fun to be had before the end of the season. Had lots and lots of games. So if you're looking to get to a game on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there'll probably be one on <laughs> in uh, on in the combined counties div one. Brilliant. Um uh do you want to do your ads now, Tom? And then we can talk about the weekend's uh, games and fixtures uh, afterwards. Yeah, or... should we do should we do the end of part part one and then we'll move into part two. Brilliant. So that will be the end of part one. Uh, join us after these messages for part two. Hi, everybody. Uh, just to let you know, this podcast is sponsored by Ticket Pass, the ethical ticketing company. Uh, the Ticket Pass allow re- um, club football clubs, events, anything you th- can think of that you want to sell tickets to, to sell tickets. And they essentially send 50% of their admin fee to a charity that you can choose. We've added loads of charities. There are loads of charities now across Berkshire up there, so you can pick some, or you can add charities of your own and suggest that they do that and get involved. So it's a really great way to make a little bit of money for your club. Um, Dan, you at Tadley, you guys at Tadley Kaliva have you started using Ticket Pass. How much, can, can you tell us how much you raised for charity from the recent AFC Bournemouth game? Yeah, we raised just under three hundred pound through the service fees for Great Ormond Street Hospital, which was amazing. Free. Um, yeah, so we're looking to use it going forward, supporting local charities and, and Great Ormond Street as well. I know it's close to a lot of people heart people's hearts around the area, so it's it's definitely um, a product we're going to be using moving forward. Fantastic, and I, I think it's a it's a really interesting thing because I do see sometimes that perhaps online ticket sales for a for a cold midweek game between um, mm-hmm. two clubs who maybe don't generate the most support isn't necessarily one you'd think about selling tickets for. But I, to me personally, I think it's a long term thing that you have to push and you have to keep having there because if you can get one person randomly buying a ticket for the game they may become a regular fan and then suddenly um that's when it starts to pay its way so it's a long for me it's always a long-term thing and i and i really like it as a service um we also have a ticket store with ticket pass on the football in berkshire website um also to say this podcast is also sponsored by the curious academy in reading um the curious academy is part of the curious lounge which provides workspace but the curious academy uh is really really great it helps build confidence in young people who want to get back into the workplace or want to get into the workplace for the first time they run courses for old people for young people for just people middle aged like you and me rob Mm -hmm. um of which we are definitely now and as i say they help to build confidence they help to build new digital skills and all sorts of things like that so please do go and check out the curious academy and to add if you do go there it's just by reading station which is really handy if you want to jump on the train which i do there you go rob there's your ads very good thank you very much sir. tom 
and welcome back to part two. Right during this part, we'll be looking back at the weekend's uh, games, and I mean, there's only one place to start, really, and that is Ascot United um, in away in the uh, to West Disbury and Charlton in the FA Vars uh, the quarterfinals, and they managed to get through on penalties, a one-one draw, followed by four-three victory on penalties, and they're into the semi-final of the FA Vars. Pretty incredible uh, result for Ascot and. You know, they they just look like uh, the team to beat in that competition, Tom. They they really do, don't they? Um, it, it's hard to know. I mean, the way that the the FA Vars has shifted from a northeast to kind of a, a middle of the south kind of situation, it's it's sort of it's stuck between the southeast and the southwest, isn't it? But it's the the way that suddenly clubs from around our area are suddenly performing and getting quite far in the Vars. Um, and if I include Chertsey in our little list, which, you know, you know, I can, it's fine. Um, <laughs> that I think it's, it's what is it, four, fi- four finals from around here in the last five yeah. finals with three of those winning it, that being Thatcham, Chertsey, Binfield, and I've forgotten. Who have I forgotten there? Oh, Newport Pagnell Town. Um, I'm including yeah. them because they're Bucks and Bucks. So yeah, so so that, so I think that's um, you know it's quite incredible how that's changed. And and you you really wouldn't bet against. Well, people aren't betting against Ascot. You can see in the odds. Um, I, I'm not a betting man myself, but but when, when you occasionally look at those things, you know Ascot are probably the favourites now. Um, so it's you, you know what they what they did there that that was quite to be to be a goal down. Um, you know Brendan Matthew cannot stop scoring. Um, Abby will shout at me because I don't know the exact number of goals, but I think he scored 36 goals this season. Mm. Um, if I remember rightly, the, a few years ago, Shane Cooper-Clark scored about 40 on the way to Thatch and winning the Vars. Um, yeah, they're just the fact that they're, you know, they're top of the league as well. Um, that that their, their league title is not quite as clear-cut. Um, they've still got some work to do there, but certainly uh, I'd be really surprised if they aren't at the Vars final um, come May or end of April, whenever it is, it, they they just they have a, they have a way to win, don't they? Um, and and I, I must admit, when they missed that penalty, I thought they were beat because I just I have when if you miss the first penalty, I always feel like just that's it, it's done. Your heads must drop because there's so much pressure on the next guy and the next guy. But then obviously West Didsbury did him a favour. Um, and for goodness sake, do not celebrate in front of the away fans, especially mm-hmm. at the end. Uh, that um, You're probably going to come on to this, Rob, but yeah, get, like a, a ground that is, uh, if, if reports are to be to believe there were 30 to 40 Ascot fans there in amongst 1,300, where on earth are you supposed to celebrate that's not going to annoy your grown mm-hmm. men, for heaven's sake? If you go and and women, I suspect you know, grown men and women. Let's not let's not um, let's not miss out fifty uh, percent of the population there. Grown men and women, control yourselves. People celebrating winning a football match. Come on, absolutely. Uh, Dan, you've never done that, I bet. Have you? Never, never. <laughs> Me either. Me either. Hypocrites, all of us. But still, <laughs> sorry, Rob. No, I was just going to uh, bring Dad in and see uh, um, if he had anything to add and uh, maybe talk about the the draw. They've been drawn away to Corsham Town uh, from the Hellenic League, um, yeah. just southwest of Chippenham. So, not, I mean, they've been drawn away quite a lot in this competition so far, Ascot. Probably would have preferred a home time, but an away fixture. You've avoided Newport Pagnell, who was exactly. uh, holders and still in the competition. That's not the worst draw to have, I guess. No, I think I think it's favourable. Obviously, a home tie would have been better for Ascot. But if you look at Bimford front to the final um, a few yeah. years ago, every game was played away. Yeah. Um, sometimes I guess it's less pressure if you're if you're playing against uh, an away crowd. Um, sometimes you're going as underdogs in, in that sense, and you're not playing in front of your home crowd and pressure and bits and pieces like that. But I definitely think avoiding Congleton, who are going strong up in um, is it the northwest counties they're playing in, um, and obviously Newport Pagnell, the, the current holders who are looking good value to get to Wembley again. I, I think that is a favourable draw for Ascot, um, and I know we can't really look at individual leagues and, and see how the teams are getting on, but I think they're on a better they're better form than Caution. I think arguably they're a better better side on paper. So I can't see any reason as to why they won't be at Wembley on the 21st of May. 
Yeah, I mean, these games are so close now that in the FA Vars, the standard is really good. Did you see yeah. every single game on the, uh, the the quarterfinals was decided on penalties? Yeah. <laughs> so it was absolutely, you know, absolutely incredible that these games are so tight. And <clears throat> uh, yeah, just getting having to hold your nerve and get through on penalties, every team had to do it. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's incredible, really, isn't it? I, I must admit, I think that the fact that it goes straight to penalties now, I think that adds a little extra. I, I, I'll hands up and I'll say I hate extra time. I think it's completely pointless. <laughs> you know, you might get the odd one where two teams go at each other, but most of the time, one team is desperately holding on for penalties. Mm. Yeah. It's just at least one team. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. even worse if it's both teams. Yeah. Um. You've got. You've got. You've got. You've got players sort of hobbling around desperately trying to get through the 30 minutes and and then you expect them to be able to stand up and take a penalty kick i think going straight to penalties is is right is the right thing to do and i and i'd I'd go as far as to say and i know i know people love the fa cup and i know people think very strongly of its traditions and and you know i do as well but i just don't see the point in extra time if you want to if we want to have a replay that's 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 absolutely fine full-time replay Full time penalties if it's if it's still level after two games. I think that's I think that's fine. Um, I know a few years ago when during during the, towards the end of um, I think the first COVID lockdown when the FA Cup came back and it was one game and penalties to get all the games in. Um, mm. That worked really well. I went to Reading City. Uh, sorry, Basingstoke Town. At, this was at Reading City. I went to Basingstoke Town. I forget who they were playing now, um, and that went straight to penalties and it was brilliant. Both teams gave everything. It was absolutely brilliant. And I just think. Especially for the Vars, with the with times of the vast, you know, distances you travel and the fixture congestion. Yeah, we were just talking about Sandhurst with their fixture congestion. Imagine if Ascot had had to replay that one next weekend. That knocks on and then knocks on and knocks on, and we just can't do that anymore with the with the playoffs. And I like the playoffs, so so th- that's to stay. But yeah, full time penalties done. That's that's how it should be. I think. Although Dan, I know you you had that with um with Tadley against Bournemouth again, and I made maybe you think mm-hmm. differently. I don't know. No, well that game especially, I think um, penalties was great because that extra half an hour with professional, uh, well professional footballers at, at that young age, I think fitness was shown. So, and again, you were there. The, the spectacle of that at the end of the game was brilliant. Everyone was involved, still engaged in the game, um, and I think, like you said, Tom, going. We, we can't have replays in the FA Vars, but especially when it goes to the national draw and bits and pieces mm. like that. I, I think if it is a draw at the end of the 90, straight to penalties is, is the best way um, because you don't want people getting injured for an extra half hour. They're going to put their, they're still going to put bodies on the line if, if they're going for it. And again, like you said, it, it sometimes it can turn into a non-event where both t- both teams are just happy to settle for penalties and and take it to the lottery. So you might as well just scrap that extra half hour and, and, and go for it. Absolutely. One thing that uh, has changed since... Um, uh, well, another thing that's changed since COVID came in is the they've done away with the two-leg semi-finals. Uh, now, were you a fan of that as well? Or would you, have, uh, would you prefer it as it is now? One-off game, straight to penalties at uh, full time. I'll direct um... you in. Go on, Dad. You you can start us off on that one. I do like it in a sense of it gives both sides a chance to play in front of a home crowd, yeah. um, and I guess for the local community, Ascot would would get a lot down there for that game for the, for the semi final. Um, I can see both sides of it from from that sense, but I think in terms of the actual match for a neutral, you're going to get a better game as a one legged semi final. Um, because you have to leave everything on the line. Then there, there's no, there's no. We'll take a one nil loss and and sit back on that and go go into the home fixture having to come out and score if we're good at home in front of a home crowd, etc. So I think from a club's point of view, they kind of want a home tie, but mm-hmm. from a neutral and a spectators' point of view, the, the games are one off. Both teams have to go for it. Um, and there's no sitting back. It's a semi-final to get to Wembley and play in the biggest game of your life. So, mm-hmm. from it's, uh, it's a one-game shootout, give everything you've got. Yeah. And, and that, for me, I think that's a, the, the better way. Very good. I'd I'd definitely agree with Dan there. I think um, the 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 two-legged semi-final is is 
is great. That's that's fine. Um, all the things Dan said, but luck of the draw, shootout, done. You know, it just like these games are so tight. What are we we we've seen that Rob, you mentioned they all went to penalties. These games are so tight now. Why are we? There's, there's no real reason to string it out over two games. Like I, I haven't obviously I've not done the research because we've just brought this up now. But my my guess would be that most of these two legged semi finals probably ended in draws and penalty shootouts <laughs> in the end. So, and and as I say that I, I'm guessing I haven't done the research whatsoever. But I would not be surprised to learn that. So you've got to ask yourself. What's the point? And as I say, I know my argument there is built on not actually knowing the data, but I just, yeah, luck of the draw, penalty shootouts, done. Very good. It, just, it makes it a more exciting competition. And these yeah. games, as we said, are so tight. Mm-hmm. Well, that um, semi final has been played on the 1st of April in Corsham, but as we mentioned, just just sort of southwest of Chippenham. So not a huge distance to travel, um, considering. They, where they could have been up north again or, you know, it's probably the closest club to Ascot. So, uh, um, yeah, not too far to travel. So if you have the weekend off, it would be a great option to go and see Ascot and give them a bit of support in the FA Vars. Brilliant. Well, um, one other um, division that has sort of uh, is got a, quite an interesting title race going on uh, on the women's side of the game is the Thames Valley County Women's Football League Division 1 um, over the course of the weekend um, there's two Berkshire sides involved in the title race, Mortimer Ladies moved to the top of the table um, uh, and Ascot Ladies Reserves though are only two points behind them with a game in hand Ascot Ladies actually did Mortimer a favour by beating um, New Bradwell St Peter's um, who were top of the table? Uh, they, they are now the sandwich, uh, the meat in the Berkshire sandwich, if you will, uh, sitting there in second place between Mortimer Ladies, a point behind Mortimer Ladies, and a point above Ascot uh, United Ladies Reserve. But yeah, Mortimer Ladies went away uh, to Banbury with a two-nil victory. Um, still uh, between seven and five games to go in that division. Quite a uh, quite an exciting uh, title race you've got there, Tom. Yeah, it, it looks that way, doesn't it? I think all the way down to uh, is, uh, Walgrave, Walgraves is a, lo- a long shot to get mm-hmm. up there, I think. But you know, you can probably go all the way down to, to fifth place before you start to rule anybody out. Um, a little wobble here or there, and a, and a good run for Walgrave. Tyler's mm-hmm. Panthers are certainly not out of it either. Um, so it is very, it's very Berkshire centric there. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Ascot United Ladies Reserves were on that phenomenal unbeaten that phenomenal winning run they did finally lose a game mm-hmm. um but but you know i suppose they are favorites aren't they going into that um i'm not sure if they got to play mortimer yet um i mean just oh. i didn't i didn't uh they've got oh, the guess they've got a <laughs> cracking game that one looks 26th of the third 26th of march sorry so that is next weekend it's mortimer ladies at home to ask united ladies mm-hmm. I mean, that could well decide the outcome of the division, um, and you've got ask it. They've also got um, Harwell and Hendred, which sounds like a beer manufacturer, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and as, and then they've got Tylehurst Panthers last game of the season. So um, I think there's actually some other games to be scheduled. But uh, oh, yeah. I apologise. So, yes, so I don't know. I don't know when they're going to be played. But uh, yeah, there's a. They're the only three that are currently scheduled. Yes. But I think they've actually got. Yeah. Oh yes, you're right. To go, yes. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So I think uh, so. Ask it. You know they they will be the favourites I think, um, but it it could well come down to who wins between Mortimer and Ascot. I think a draw is probably good for Mortimer, a win is also good for Mortimer, but uh, uh, Ascot will need to go into that. Um, albeit you know as we said, Ascot do have a game in hand, but if we're talking about momentum, then it's all to play for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good indeed. Yeah, Not could we quite... just? Sorry, Rob. Go on. I was just saying, could we uh, could we just mention Reading women as well, who who got a little bit of a tonking at the weekend, four <laughs> nil, um, off the back of uh, their brilliant win against West Ham. I think we I think we all kind of predicted that, but they've got Chelsea in the FA Cup this weekend, which yeah. will be um, that will be a game. Uh, uh, I expect that we may well see in that one um, Amy Claypole, Bracknell's Amy Claypole in that game for Chelsea. Um, she played. She made her FAWSL debut last week, so um, 
it will be really interesting to see what sort of team Chelsea put out. Um, mm. Wouldn't it be great if Reading went and nicked it? Absolutely. It would be indeed. I mean, they start as, <laughs> probably start as second favourites, but, you know, second favourites can cause an upset. Um, but mm. yeah, they, I was actually at the... Um, the Arsenal game last season in the same in the same game with the same result. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, Arsenal are looking pretty strong towards the top end of the table, but uh, we weren't really predicting much from Reading. But they're still looking slightly nervous. Um, yeah, looking over their shoulder, Leicester's form has picked up, so Reading perhaps aren't as secure as they um, were, but there's a lot of teams down there in that sort of uh, relegation battle there. Pick yeah. Up the <laughs> there, yeah, there's a little bit. No, there is... Um... Obviously, like you said, Leicester below them. Then you've got Reading. I think West Ham are down there as well, aren't they? And Spurs um, as well. Who Reading beat. So there's going to be... The, the next couple of months is going to be huge for Reading. Um, hopefully, with some players coming back from injury, um, they'll be able to pick up a couple of results in and around them to to kind of boost that chance of staying in the WS, WSL1. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Those... <laughs> Those games against Brighton and Leicester remain absolutely vital for Reading, yeah. and I think, Definitely. I think, I think, to be honest, anything that happens between now and those two games doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure, yeah. you know, it'd be a morale boosting to beat Chelsea at the weekend, but I'm sure Kelly Chambers is basically looking at those two games as, as securing, the, securing at least the season for the club. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the... Sorry, go on, Dan. I just said, like you said, Tom, a morale boost, but a win against the side above them is, is going to carry that momentum through and it's going to give them a lot of confidence going into those games against Brighton and Leicester. So um, at any points they can pick up, even a draw if, you, if you're playing the likes of, um, I guess, Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester United, will, will be great for the side just, just to carry that momentum through. Absolutely. And yes, like we say, the games against Brighton and Leicester are their next league fixtures. So... Uh... Mm. Yeah, <laughs> bearing down on them quite quickly. So, big days ahead for uh, Reading women there. Okay, well, um, why don't we wrap it up then by picking out a fixture from the weekend each that you'd uh, you'd like to or you'd like to highlight or one that you think would be uh, worth going to. Um, did Dan, sorry, just to interrupt, Dan, were you able to talk about what Tadley. happened on Saturday? Uh, yeah, I can do yeah briefly. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure whether to bring this up too quickly, but there was a bit of a um, uh, well, there was a medical emergency at Tadley on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was about the, I think it was the sixty third minute, something like that. Um, opposition player was substituted about ten minutes before. Um, I'm not really too sure what happened. It happened over on the far side to where I was. Um, the opposition player collapsed um, and then it sparked a bit of panic. Our captain come running off, um, trying to look for the defibrillator, uh, the community one we have. Um, and then I know that the opposition physio and, and our physio as well, Kaz, um, were, were with the player. I know that uh, CPR had to be used or, or performed Um so I know Kaz and, and our player Shamar as well, who were the player, he was marking him all game. They've done a great job there, obviously. Um, the player is now back home, uh, we're told, and recovering, which, which is great to hear. But I guess it just shows the importance of um, the roles that the physios play within these clubs at this level. Um, I mean, easily, if it could have happened on, on the Sunday league pitch and there were no physios or no first aiders, then it could have been a different story. So, really, the club commends both Shamar and, and Kazar physio for, for the fantastic work they've done and obviously Shearwater's physio as well because um, it could have been a different story. But, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty. it was a pretty... Horrible experience uh, for us watching, let alone the what what Kazar physio went through and and bits and pieces like that. So, I guess really they have to be congratulated for the for their quick actions and the brilliant work they've done at the weekend. Um, yeah, it's yeah, pretty pretty horrible experience. So, mm. but we're yeah. we're glad he's good now, and obviously we'll be working with Kaz and Shamar for anything they need to move forward. Um, obviously, they're, they're pretty shaken still. So, 
we'll give them as much time as, as they need and, and any support um, both within the club and, and professionally if needed. Yeah, absolutely. Really, yeah, horrible scenes, like you say, but um, fantastic work by the, um, not just the medical staff, but it sounds like, but some of the players and, uh, and everyone else around to, uh, you know, turn what could have been a, a tragic situation into uh, a more positive outcome. Yeah, we say. no, definitely. So, yeah, if, if we do take the positives out of it, the, um, the lad's back home with his family recovering, Um as, as far as we've heard, no, no real, I guess, real issues. But um, we've not been told obviously the results of the tests and bits and pieces. But he's home recovering, and, and all we can do is wish him well in his recovery. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, thank thank our physio and our medical team and our players for their for their quick actions. Fantastic. Yeah, well said. And yeah, echoing that here from us. Definitely. Good. Good. Okay, well, we'll move on and talk about the, or just pick out some fixtures from the upcoming weekends that we're all looking forward to. Tom, I'll, I'll come to you first. Which game on on Saturday should we say that? Uh, have you got your eye on that you think uh, people should uh, look towards? I mean, it's hard not to not to look towards that that Bracknell Town versus mm. Truro game, isn't it? Really, absolutely. Um, that's you know. In in a season of defining fixtures, that's another defining fixture for the for the Robins. Um, yeah, that, I mean that's that's a that's an enormous game for them, and will it will go some way to deciding whether they actually could nick the title. Um, yeah. It's probably not the right word if they if they get it. They you know they've they've swiped it from the crown jewels from underneath the noses of the of the guards, haven't they? They've they've <laughs> they've just. They've nabbed it. They've whatever whatever they've done, they will have they will have absolutely deserved to do that. Um, you've also got the the Maids Derby, Maidenhead United v Maidstone United. Who knows who's home or who's away? It'll yeah. get up in translation anyway. So um, York Road supposedly the home pitch, but you know could be either. Yeah, a lot of people will be confused by that one. Yeah. Thinking they're in the same club. <laughs> absolutely. So uh, uh, Dan, how about yourself? Any games that you'd like to highlight uh, this weekend? Yeah, I'll, obviously the Bracknell game is massive. Um, but for me, I think Edgeware and Kingsbury, who are on a great run at the moment in the combined counties north, um, have got Reading City at home. And I think that's a massive game for Reading City, uh, obviously coming off the back of the defeat yesterday. Um, they have to win it because Ascot, if, if they pick up another win and, and Reading City start dropping points, then it's all but done. In that division, um, Edgeware and Kingsbury have won three on the bounce now as well. So it's going to be a tough game for Reading. Um, I mean, uh, hopefully they do pick up the results and, and they they keep chasing Ascot down for that, for that one promotion spot. But I think it'll be a tough game. And yeah, one that's going to be maybe defining for Reading as well, really, in their, in their yeah. season. Like I said, if if Reading do drop points and, and Ascot went away a spell from spell Thorn Sports, then... They're putting further away. They're already seven points clear, so it, it could be a uh, a very very big weekend in that division. Absolutely, yeah. And Reading would be slightly looking over their shoulder as well because that second spot obviously goes into an interstep playoff. Yeah. Uh, so um, one of the uh, third or fourth te- bottom teams from a step four division at the end of the season. They're only one point ahead of Egham Town at the moment. Um, they do have a couple of games in hand, so. Um, so they're probably still in. The, well, they're definitely still in the driving seat. It's all in their own hands. But uh, yeah, Egham Town and Flackwell Heath are, are, are quite close behind them there. So it's not done and dusted for second place either. So yeah, like you say, could be uh, is a very big uh, game for them. Possibly even season defining. So yes, nice pick. Um, if I could just also flag. Um, I'm never quite so, so on on our fixtures and results page. I'm it, the, some of the Thames Valley League fixtures move around quite a lot, and we can't always keep up with them. But it does look like it's the Reading Road, the Padworth Derby in the Thames Valley Premier League, Burfield at home to Reading YMCA, um, mm-hmm. which is which will be which will be a decent one as well, I should think. Mm-hmm. Um, and on on Sunday, um, obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, you can only look to the FA Cup game, really. I think at the moment, Reading Women mm-hmm. versus Chelsea. So, I presume it's on Sunday. <laughs> That's a good bit of research. This is, ter- this is terrible, isn't it? Live, <laughs> live research for the yes. uh, yeah Reading Women game. So, yeah. um, yes, so thank thank goodness for that. Sunday, the nineteenth of March at two o'clock. 
Um, I think that's that. I don't think you can look any further than that one, to be honest. So, um, apologies, Reading women fans. I should have known that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's that one is also at home. So, uh, yeah, yes. a couple of a um, couple of Berkshire fixtures for you to look <laughs> at there. But obviously, as always, all the fixtures from around the county will be on the uh, our fixtures and results page. So just head along to www.footballinberkshire.co.uk uh, and select the fixtures and results page and find yourself a local game to. Uh, get down to this weekend to support the Berkshire side. Um, brilliant. Uh, is there anything else uh, anyone wants to bring up before we wrap this up? I don't think so. I think that's all good. Uh, brilliant. Well, yeah, um, yeah I think, uh, first of all, uh, let me just say, make sure you can uh, get down to, or you can get all of our content on Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, we're on all the platforms. Uh, just look for Football in Berkshire across them. I'm not going to go through all the individual addresses for them, but if you search for Football in Berkshire, you'll find us and you'll be able to keep in tabs. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way. Like I said, footballinberkshire.co.uk. You can find all our articles there. So all that's left to say is uh, to Dan, thank you very much for joining us and stepping in so ably over the course of the podcast. No, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Well, I'm sure you'll be back um, sooner rather than later. And uh, as always, Tom, thank you very much for joining me. And we will speak to you all again next week. Goodbye. Bye. Take care.